So as it turns out, there's a very intimate relationship between the electric field and the electric potential, which incidentally is the same relationship between force and work, essentially relating force and energy. And we're going to look at that in a very simple case of a uniform electric field, such that the uh, math is nice and easy. Of course, the key word here is two parallel conducting plates. And whenever you see that, you're basically thinking, oh, well, that must mean that I have a uniform electric field inside the two parallel plates. They give it a certain separation between these plates, which is 0 0.04 meters for four centimeters. And they gave us this, the field strength. If you recall, the electric field is given by electric force divided by charge and that the electrical potential is equal to the potential energy divided by the charge. So very roughly speaking, you can think of as you move from say this point one over here to this point two with a certain amount of charge moving across a certain change in distance you can relate these two quantities by first looking at how the force is related to the potential energy. We can relate these two times with the added condition that we apply another external force, which is the non-conservative force, that's equal and opposite to my electric force such that my initial speed is zero and my final speed is zero. So we're just kind of pushing it back as we go along. Again, we're gonna ignore gravity. But what this does is it introduces some kind of external force to give us some non-conservative work. So these guys are zero and we have some initial potential energy plus the force parallel times my displacement as always equal to my final potential energy. So now remember that this force is actually going opposite the force we're applying. It's opposite to the motion of the electrons to slow it down. So that's why this force is anti-parallel giving us minus QE delta d is equal to pe2 minus pe1 and you can cast this as delta pe some kind of change in potential energy which is then equal to q times delta v right v2 minus v1 the q can cancel out because it's the same q feeling it and therefore we arrive at <clears throat> relationship between potential and electric field. Now the parallel bit is still important because we could have done some crazy move like this, but it's only the parallel force parallel to the displacement that matters. Another way to write this is of course that the electric field is delta V over delta D. As long as your electric field is constant, then you can apply this formula. And this negative here is important because as you go along the direction of the electric field, you're actually decreasing in potential because here you're more positive, you're high potential, then you go way towards the negative. So you're losing potential as you move along the electric field. So that's why this negative is important. And unit wise, that's why they give you this unit here, but it's equivalent because as you know, a potential is measured in volts, which is a joule per coulomb, and the joule is newton meter still per coulomb, which is equal to newton per coulomb, which is the unit we we're used to for electric field. So that takes care of a little bit of theory, and now it's just a matter of using the theory and answering the question. So, so let's get to it. What is the potential difference between the plates? Well, that's kind of simple because they're basically asking what is the potential difference? In this case, they just care about the sign because they don't tell us any direction 
per se. So it's the size of the electric field multiplied by the separation distance. And of course, being parallel plates, then that distance is perpendicular. That is the parallel distance for my electric field. It is really as simple as that, and we get 3,000 volts. Units all work out. You can say that it's 3.00 kilovolts. Part B. Then they say to play the lowest potential. So here is V equals zero. What is the potential? One centimeter away from that plate. So in this case, you imagine if you move from this zero point over to this one centimeter, you can use this thing. So delta V is equal to negative E delta D. And since you're we're moving the other way as the electric field, we put another negative sign, so we drop the negative sign overall. And that's equal to V final minus V original. V original here is the zero. So V final is equal to E parallel times D, which is seven fifty volts. Pretty simple math. Main thing is the relationship between electrical potential and electric field. In the case of uniform electric field, it's nice and simple like that.